Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, it's the day of a few fights that we've made videos on here online. And the casino, a very formidable adversary, has struck back. They have fooled around with the odds in such a way that, quite frankly, some of these fights are now unbettable. Let's talk about the fights. Just a brief summary on just the betting strategy for today. I believe the best fight to bet on today is the Juan Manuel Lopez versus Daniel Ponce de Leon fight. That bet's still viable, right? I simply don't see that fight going the distance. The bet I'm recommending is both guys to win by KO. Understand, this is a rematch of a fight that ended by first round KO several years ago. Also, Juan Manuel Lopez, in my opinion, has stamina problems. Right? He also, at this stage in his career, has coordination problems, in my opinion. Right? And reflex problems. You can get Juan Ma by KO at plus 300. You can get Ponce de Leon by KO at minus 150. The spread between the plus 300 and the minus 150 gives you an opportunity to take both guys to win by KO. I try to stay away from over-unders. Here, you don't have to play around with an over-under. You can literally get the guys for the entire fight. That bet's still viable. Juan Manuel Lopez by KO hedged with Ponce de Leon by KO. You can profit if either happens. Now here's a fight that is not bettable at the current odds. Deontay Wilder versus Malik Scott on oddschecker.com. This is the day of the fight. Saturday, March 15th. Be careful on this fight. On Odds Checker, they have Deontay Wilder as a minus 500 favorite. Right? But we know Deontay Wilder is a flawed fighter. Right? Just not a lot of boxing ability. Great punch. Great long right hand. Magnificent power from distance. The problem is that the sport of boxing involves more than throwing right hands from distance. I question his inside game. I question his left hand. I question his defense. Right? Malik Scott at a plus 350 to a plus 450, in my opinion, is a live underdog. Here's the problem. Scott got dropped and stopped by Derek Chisora. There are some questions about Malik Scott's chance. Lord knows in the heavyweight division, one of the chin checkers of that division is Deontay Wilder. So, just intellectually, I believe the play would be Wilder by KO. Right? I believe if Wilder doesn't get a KO, he gets out box and loses the fight. Hedged with Malik Scott to win the fight. But, of course, you got smart guys running these casinos. Incredibly, they have made... Deontay Wilder by KO, a minus 400. Think about that for a moment. Right? In a competitive heavyweight match, they have made Wilder a minus 400 to win the fight by KO. That negates the ability to hedge the play. Right? Because if you're getting a plus 400, on Malik Scott, and keep in mind, some websites, check the legality in your jurisdiction, right? You don't want to do anything illegal. But Bovada.lv, for example, only has Malik Scott as a plus 350 to win, right? Understand you just don't have enough of a gap between the minus 400, if you have a gap, the minus 400 and the, let's say, 
plus 350 to plus 450. You don't have the gap to make that hedge work. So if I were you, I would proceed with caution. You're talking about a situation. It's been a long morning. You're uh, talking about a situation where you have a better boxer who's the underdog. And he's taking on a guy who is the bigger puncher. This fight might be unbettable unless you can get odds that have a spread between Wilder by KO and uh, Malik Scott to win the fight. Let's talk about another fight that the casino has drained the hedge out of. And that's Danny Garcia against Mauricio Herrera. Now I know Garcia is riding high. I know they have a big ad campaign about Garcia, Puerto Rican, going back to Puerto Rico. Right? Okay, fair enough. Uh, let me just say this as a Jamaican who was raised in New York City. You know what? By the time I was 18, I knew New York City a hell of a lot better than I knew Kingston. Right? I'm guessing Danny Garcia knows the streets of Philadelphia a hell of a lot better than he knows Puerto Rico. But... Be that as it may, he's going back home. There's a lot of hype on the fight. Garcia has a very high KO percentage, right? Has dropped some major players in the division, including Eric Morales, including Amir Khan, right? So I thought that people would expect Danny Garcia here to get an early stoppage. Unfortunately, the smartest guys in the room are sometimes the ones running casinos even though the fight is against a lesser known fighter in Danny Garcia's backyard believe it or not the over under on the fight and my suggested play was that you consider taking the over in the match right because Herrera to me it has better defense than Danny Garcia right the unknown guy is actually a technician well Apparently, someone at the casino figured it out because Lad Brooks, naming an actual casino here, Lad Brooks has the over eight and a half rounds at minus 400. It doesn't get better at other casinos. Other casinos have an over of nine and a half rounds. <coughs> Understand that would mean the midway point of the 10th round round right if they're going to be giving you paltry odds like minus 400 and minus 250 then in my opinion the risk reward is just not there the odds always matter so to the casual sports fan let me just say i am expecting mauricio herrera to go several rounds with danny garcia I think this fight is going to be a lot more competitive than the open betting line suggests that it's going to be. Right? Danny Garcia is a huge prohibitive favorite. It's only when you get into the prop bets that you realize that the odds makers themselves realize that this fight is going to be competitive. So that raises the question. Right? Why are you not simply taking Herrera to win the fight outright? And the reason is because Danny Garcia is going back home. He is the favored son. Right? I'm just here to tell you, if you look at the scoring in the Orlando Salida, Juan Manuel Lopez, first fight. Right? You're going to see curious scoring. In my opinion, and I know it's just unfair, but the venue matters. Right, If you're fighting an American fighter in America before his hometown crowd, you're going to have to do an awful lot to get a decision. Danny Garcia is very active. Right, Danny Garcia knows how to throw punches. I'm guessing that it's very hard for a fighter like Mauricio Herrera, who has a less than 40% KO ratio, to be viewed as having outboxed 
Danny Garcia, over 12 rounds in Puerto Rico. Right? But I will say this. You're certainly getting compensated for the risk involved if you take Herrera. Just understand, though, that Garcia has never been knocked out. Never. And Herrera doesn't have the punch. Right? And Herrera's fight style is more technical than visually dazzling. I'm expecting the crowd to be firmly on Danny Garcia's side. I b don't believe that the challenger here, Herrera, has a realistic chance of winning a decision. So I believe the casinos have drained this fight of any potential profits. If I were you, at this point, I would stay away from this fight. The fight I would focus on would be Juan Manuel Lopez versus Daniel Ponce de Leon. Let me hear from you. Good luck. Uh, I hope this actual odds video helps. I know it's last minute. Let me hear from you. Tell us also if there's another fight that's caught your attention that you're confident on. Keep in mind, Ike Chalemba is fighting. Thomas Ademic is fighting. Kel Brook is fighting. Kevin Mitchell is fighting all today. Give us your thoughts in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.